Hello there! Today I'm here to wrap up the Reading Rush 2019 I wanted to read seven things and I did read seven things which I'm really happy about because there was so much going on with the house and stuff this week and everything was just going wrong as it has since this process began. So having the reading rush actually, I was worried it was going to stress me out but actually it became a really comforting thing um, and I think if I hadn't had that momentum of the reading rush I would have been doing what I have been doing recently which is just stressing out and not getting around to reading but because the reading rush was on I was forcing myself to get to books and I really enjoyed having that escape. So I'm going to talk about the books in the order that I read them, I didn't do all the challenges um, however I did end up doing more than I thought I was going to um, so <clears throat> the books that apply for challenges I will mention here. Let's get straight into it. So it was the so the first book I read was The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. I have a confession, I did start this on the Sunday night because it's quite thick um, and there's quite a lot of writing to the page so I just knew I wasn't going to be able to finish this in one day. Um, however, you know, I'm still counting it. I finished it in the reading rush and I only read a little bit. I read the very beginning on the Sunday night just to give myself that little bit of a head start. Um, this is my second John Wyndham. It's the one, the first one I read was The Day of the Triffids um, and this one is basically about in Midwich there is a strange incident um, where this bizarre kind of UFO kind of object ends up coming into the town and when it is there it, it's called the day out um, and everybody who goes near the town or is in the town just randomly passes out and then comes back around and everything seems to be back to normal until all the women in the village begin to fall pregnant and every single woman who was in the vicinity of the day out becomes pregnant um, from a sort of bizarre reason and it soon becomes clear that when they were in the day out um, they were basically impregnated by some kind of alien form um, but when they have these children they are normal seemingly normal children however things begin to emerge and the children begin to have this strange connection and a lot of people are studying the children and things go from there really. Um, I really enjoy John Wyndham's style I found that exactly the same thing in the day of the Triffids he has a very distinctive and almost comedic style about him so even though some of his subject matter is quite bizarre and out there. He does it in a very tongue-in-cheek kind of almost humorous way and, and I really enjoy that style and it's really easy to read and just in, generally enjoyable. I think this story was quite clever and um, there were points in here where it was a really interesting look at women's bodies as well which I didn't expect and obviously you know then we focus on children. Um, perhaps the one slight niggle I had with this and I, I don't suppose it's a niggle and again I think it is a stylistic thing um, is that John Wyndham has decided to tell this story through a narrator who is one of the Midwich um, residents and he is trying to get home when the blackout occurs and him and his wife sort of end up walking because they can't get there by car and they both end up being involved in the day out um, but he narrates the story from a very outside perspective um, and I think that is intentional because he's kind of looking at it looking back after years and years and years and sort of observing and putting together all of the information that he's found. I don't know if this would have worked better in a sort of omnipotent narrator. I didn't feel like the narrator was an integral enough part of his own story if that makes sense so I, I kind of didn't know that it was necessary to have his narration. Um, uh, but other than that I really enjoyed this and I would definitely recommend it. Then I read Emily Northam's Stroke Your Heart. I will also mention that this is translated from French by Alison Anderson. Um, this is basically a look at mother and daughter relationships I suppose predominantly and the impact that that relationship and the falling apart of that relationship can have on both the mother and the daughter and um, that is a subject that I am infinitely interested in um, so I always really look out for stories about this however however I didn't like this and I, uh, it, it kind of took me a while to realise um, but there are there are parts in this where it's okay um, predominantly it follows what's her name 
It follows Diane and basically her mother never really connects with her um, and she, when she's young, assumes that it's just her mother um, and she's sort of always striving for her mum's attention. But then when her brother and sister come along, her mum is completely besotted with them like any mother would be. Um, and, and she starts to question herself um, and kind of very much pulls away from her mother and ends up living with her grandparents. And when her grandparents pass away, she completely removes herself from the family unit and becomes comes entwined in a strange kind of love relationship with an older professor who is very much like her mother. Um, what I didn't like about this, I think in the end the point kind of fizzles out into nothing, but also I think the predominant thing that I didn't like is that it's very it's very stark writing and it's very this happened then this happened then this happened then this happened. It, it's very listicle and very just not really flows very well and actually it very much reminded me of Lullaby. Um, is it called Lullaby? Which I read earlier this year, which I really also didn't like. It's just a style that I can't get behind and actually I think it's interesting because I think I'm much more like this than I would like to admit when I write. I think that's something that really bugs me about my own writing so when it happens with other people it just, it grates me the wrong way. There's no warmth in this writing it's very to the point and this happened and then she did this and then she thought this and I just can't I just couldn't get behind it in the end then I moved on to another French translation which was the reader on the 627 oh I've been forgetting to mention the challenges so the midwitch cuckoos was for the challenge of purple on the cover even though it had pink on the cover we're, we're not going to mention that and this was the challenge of a book with five or more words in the title though again there is actually a number which doesn't technically count but I'm counting it this is by Jean-Paul Didier Howard did he? I don't know, the writing's actually quite confusing to read. I don't know what that name is. Um, and it is translated by Ros Schwartz. Um, now this is a book about a man who works in a book pulping factory and he ends up picking up pages of the books that he has pulped and reading out loud on the train to and from work just to give himself a little bit of sanity I suppose and to sort of pay heed to these books that he feels bad for pulping. Um, it, it, it was it was promising to start with and I thought it was kind of cute and um, some women approach him on the train and ask him if he can go and read for them privately at home um, for, for them and their elderly friends and you, you think that it's going to be like this feel good kind of he, he connects and he, he changes their lives and then it kind of goes down this path of he finds a USB and there's this digital diary on there and then he goes on a mission to find the love of his life who is the woman who wrote it. Honestly, I think it just completely goes down the wrong path with that. It just suddenly veers off and it goes from being a nice sort of sweet book to being just unbelievable, I suppose, and, and kind of just weird. Um, and, and also, you know, Insta Love, he just falls in love with her after reading a few extracts on this USB that she's been keeping. Um, yeah. It, it just went completely the wrong direction I think um, and a lot of the reviews said the same thing. I definitely think if it had kept on in the theme of the elderly women and his impact on them and the impact that his stories have on them then it probably would have been a really pleasant read but as it was it just as I say went in the wrong direction and it kind of ended up being that neither of the stories were satisfactorily done. Um, certainly his reading to the elderly people was kind of just pushed to the side it didn't really have any purpose in the end um so yeah it started off well but it really didn't didn't deliver sadly then I read um this little book which is Jean Reese Till September Petronella um these are just little tester books I don't know how much I can say about this I enjoyed the middle story Till September Petronella quite a lot um the ones either side were kind of short and a bit lacking for me but I also I often find this with these because they're short they're literally just enough to give you a tiny little taster um but yeah I enjoyed Till September Petronella itself then I read a life's work on becoming a mother by Rachel Cusk. I also included this in the five words or more challenge. Um, it's a memoir of Rachel Cusk's experience having a child and being an independent and strong woman with a child um, which is something as I say mother and daughter relationships always fascinate me and I definitely think I'm interested in the relationship that writers and sort of strong career driven women have with their babies um, and, and this was fine it was fine um, one thing I found quite strange about this and I don't know if that's a reflection on me or society but 
um, Rachel Cusk very much talks about this like she's doing it alone, like she's a single mother. Um, I, I think she mentions the father once, um, but he is there and he is present, you get that sense, but he's very much left out of it. But then at the same time, especially with the birth, like, it, it is happening to Rachel Cusk, it isn't happening to him, so why should he get um, a mention in her book? So it, it kind of, in that sense, that's what I mean, I didn't, I think it was more a reflection on society and the fact that we, that we assume that men deserve a mention when it comes to childbirth, because of course it was all happening to her body, um, he was just observing, so why should she mention him? Um, but it, it kind of, and she also doesn't really yet personalize the baby. It's very much about her internal experience of motherhood. Um, so it's it's quite isolating to read it because it you get the feeling that she felt quite alone throughout the process. Um, it, it, it was fine. I, w I wouldn't say that it overly taught me anything or showed me a view that I hadn't seen before, um, but it was still worth a read. That said, I, I did try and buy this online quite a long time ago and I couldn't really find any new copies of it. Um, I ended up getting it in a charity shop. So I don't actually know whether it's fully in print anymore or what, but you know, it's worth bearing in mind. Then I read The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. It's not this whole bind up. Um, it was only to page 70 or so. So it was around here. I'm not going to say I read all of this because I, I just didn't. Um, I've never read H.G. Wells before and I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed his style. It was so incredibly readable and, and you know you think how long ago it was written and obviously H.G. Wells is like the godfather of fantasy and it just felt so current and so fresh and so fast-paced and exciting. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Obviously the time machine, it's about a man who has created a time machine um, and he's sort of showing his friends and then a week later he comes back from having disappeared and he basically claims that he's been on this massive mission of time travel into the future and, and met these strange alien races and tr then they stole his time machine and he had to try and get it back. Um, and it, it's kind of... You have to read it, I think, in mind of how groundbreaking this kind of narrative was at the time that this was written and, and just how fun and, as I say, fast-paced it is. It's not wordy, it's not bogged down with a lot of the description that a lot of classics have. It's very feisty and fast and I think it's really interesting to look at it as an origin story for fantasy and kind of look at how how, as I say, current it is. It doesn't feel outdated, it doesn't feel old. Um, I found that H.G. Wells' voice was actually a lot like John Wyndham and I think took a lot of inspiration off of people like H.G. Wells and you can definitely tell that. Um, so it was quite interesting reading both of these books within the reading rush, but yeah, I can't wait to get to the other stories in here. There's also War of the Worlds and The, Di the Island of Dr. Moreau, so we'll see how I get on with those ones. Then finally, I finished the week with A Black Beauty by Anna Sewell my TBR for the reading rush because one of the challenges was to read a book narrated by an animal um, or a non-human and I was sort of like oh I don't own any of those and it's not really my kind of thing completely forgetting that I already had this on my TBR and it's narrated by a horse I, I it just didn't even cross my mind admittedly I don't know if I've ever actually read Black Beauty although I did get real deja vu feelings when I was reading it this time so I think I might have read it when I was younger um, but yeah I just I just didn't even twig that this is written by a horse so inadvertently I completed that challenge as well um this is <sighs> It basically just follows this horse's life, Black Beauty's life, um, and it, I think it very much was written as a kind of a warning to the people who were ill-treating their horses. Obviously, it's written at a time, um, 1877, I think, so it's written at a time when people were using cart horses instead of cars, and, you know, everybody pretty much had a horse or a, ho a horse for their household. Um, and a lot of those horses were ill-treated, whipped, not fed right, etc. Um, and I think this is basically a story that was written solely to stop the ill abuse of horses. Um, so in that sense, I suppose it's a little bit outdated because obviously horse lovers tend to have horses now. You know, you don't get every single household having a horse that they don't look after. Um, however, it was still interesting-ish. Um, there were parts where this drags. It is literally just... 
his life story effectively um and him telling you his struggles and each of his placements um it was fine i wouldn't say that i would go crazy for it i certainly wouldn't say it's the best kids book because i think i can certainly see and i definitely remember that i did own a copy of this when i was a kid but i think the reason that i had such deja vu for it was because it's one of those books that i read the beginning quite a few times and could just never get into it and I can see why it's quite slow and I think for a kid I can understand why that wouldn't have been gripping but it was fine and I'm glad that I read it now so there we go so all in all I, I wouldn't say it was the best reading rush I think I had more miss books than I had hits however there were some really good ones in there I'm really glad to have got to HG Wells I really enjoyed the John Wyndham um so yeah it, it was good and as I say it was just a nice thing to have this comforting reading rush when everything was just falling apart around me. It's always always nice to have that so please let me know down below what you read in the reading rush and I will see you next time. Bye!